Before I even met you, yes, I saw this bird house. Yes. Trucker Dan. Yes. Trucker was here. Yes. And I was like, who is Trucker Dan? Like, no one else has a bird house here. <laughs> you know? Uh. She told me he's a legend. He's a living legend. Or something to that extent. To that, You're like a uh, hot box, like, yeah, people yeah. know who you are. You know? Uh -huh. And... And thank you at the time you were away? Uh, yes, I had a going, going away party for them because I, I was planning to move to Sioux St. Marie permanently. Yeah. So they had a surprise party for me and yeah. that. Oh, yeah, they, unve house. they unveiled that at my going away party and surprise party. Yeah, it was, oh my God, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then 16 months later, things didn't work out in Sioux St. Marie. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was back. Uh, how long have you been trucker, Dan? I took on the Trucker Dan uh, in 2009. reason was that when I first came to the hot box, there were like six people named Dan. So just to distinguish myself from the rest of the Dans, and since I drove truck, it was so about 2009 officially. My first joint I smoked uh, August. Uh, 1961. Wow. Wow. That's a, you know the month. Well, because that was harvest time for tomatoes. Oh. That's why I was picking tomatoes for Heinz. <laughs> so. That's a good, that's a good, like, association. And there. being that my mother's family owned 100 acres of, to, of uh, 100 acre farm and we grew 100 acres of tomatoes, uh, the family alone could not pick all them tomatoes, so we had Mexican migrant workers come. The families of mothers, fathers, kids mm. all came for harvest season. Mm. And, and everyone smoked together? Uh, well, well, I was, I, I've been smoking cigarettes for about six months already. So we're picking tomatoes and they're passing the cigarette across the field. Mm -hmm. It gets to me, I thought it was just a, a rolled cigarette. Now I'm filled with stuff, I took a, a few hauls, and yeah. My first weed I ever smoked was Alcapurro Gold. And it, it sped me up that top, that day. I picked more tomatoes that day than I did any other day. Wow. Yeah, I made a whole $17 that day. It must have been a sativa. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You said you met some celebrities here? Uh, Woody Harrelson, uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, Emilio Estevan, um, Charlie that? Sheen. Emilio Estevez? Yeah, yeah Char Charlie Sheen. Uh, they came with uh, uh, Dan. Uh, Dan Aphrodite? No. no, no. What, what's fucking Big Dan's name? Big Dan. Big Daddy K. That were, that was in the movie, movie industry too. Heavy set guy, beard, must have an e bike. He's coming up my our, our, Yeah, Parkinson, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Parkinson? Yeah, Dan Parkinson, yeah. Piper, I'm not sure. Yeah, Piper, yeah, Piper Parkinson, yeah. Oh, the wrestler? No, 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 no. no. Uh, it's okay. I'm clueless about actors. Uh, no, he, uh, Dan used to party with Shirley and Amelia all the time. Uh, he was uh, a grip, uh, a, st a stunt man, all sorts of things. Uh, he's a child star here in, t in Toronto. Uh, uh, da, Vin da, Vin da, Vin uh, da Vinci class? No, 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 no. But in high school. Uh, Oh, Degrassi? Yeah, Degrassi, Degrassi <laughs> kid. Yeah. 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 Here's a, one early, early Degrassi kid. Uh, yeah. As far as uh, high muck and new muck in, in uh, the government and... Who was he in Degrassi? Oh. I'm like, I, that's the only one. I, know, I, I never know watched Degrassi. it. I don't know. Yeah. I never that's watched it. Did anyone here watch Degrassi? I used to. I don't remember. Yeah. 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 I loved it, yeah. 
moral of the story. It was so, it was so very Canadian. Yeah. It's still going, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the third the generation or some fucking yeah, thing now. The next generation. Fifth, fifth like generation or... Fifth generation. <laughs> <laughs> the next generation maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Actors and comedians. Did you have like any like high talk with Woody Harrelson? Oh, we sat down. First time I met Woody, um, he was at the box and I said, Hello, Woody, you know, congratulations on the movie, and that was it, and just off the wall. Do you remember which movie it was for? Uh, was it Natural Born Killers? Or no, 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 the uh, zombie, the zombie. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, Zombieland? Uh, yeah, Zombieland, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, and then the next time, uh, well, I was, he overheard me telling a few stories to someone, and he said, next time he can come tell me some stories, next time I come. So I had uh, just released the CD, mm -hmm. And when he came in with two or three other guys, and uh, he, wa I'm sitting down. And he says, I says, "Hi, Woody, how you doing?" He says, uh, "Yeah, you're a truck, aren't you?" Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, he met, yeah. And he says, "Yeah, I remember I was telling you I'm putting a CD out here. I don't want you autograph. I'll, just, I'll give you mine." <laughs> uh, I sat down and shot the shit for a while, and then uh, some idiot. Decided to take a photograph because really did not want to be, you know, oh, you know, the fanboy yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He just wanted to be left alone yeah. to chill. Yeah. And someone yeah. took a picture on, a, on their phone, yeah. put it on, on Facebook or whatever, and that's the last time when he came. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. He was kind of out here. He, he was here for Tiff. Sorry. He was here for Tiff every year. Oh. He'd stop in here. Oh, he'd stop here every year. Yeah, we had Tiff time, yeah. It was kind of leaked. Yeah, and then, yeah, once he saw, I don't know what he saw, or someone else saw it and informed him of what, but that was the last time when he came to the hot box. Yeah, that was, uh, that was 2013. 2013? Yeah. No, tw I'm sorry, 2011. 2011. 2011, that's when it is, yeah. 2011. Are you doing anything special for 420? It's on Wednesday. Yeah, I'm taking the day off. You're taking the day off. I was thinking about doing that. I'm taking the day off. I'm going to go down to Dundas Square. Uh -huh. And then at 2 o'clock, Kayla's band is playing here at 2 o'clock here. Kayla's band? Kayla. You know Kayla, the girl with the tattoos of Ice Bicycle, Doug? Oh, really? Yeah, her, band's, her band's playing here at 2 o'clock. No. Or, yep. No, they look good. Are they yeah. gonna do it on the roof? I don't know where they're gonna do it, but they're performing. They play uh, heavy metal. That's so cool. Yeah. Heavy metal chicks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> anyway, what else you want to talk about, girl? Mm. Okay, you've talked about a lot of like <laughs> your love life. Is Trucker Dan? Will Trucker Dan fall in love again? <laughs> Um, at, at this stage of my life, I don't believe so. You don't believe so? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't believe so. Is it something that you want? Pardon? Well, I know what it's like to lose someone that's close to you. Um, and at my stage of life, I don't know how long I have, and I don't believe I should put anyone through what I what I've gone through. You know, um, luckily when my, when my father passed away, mom found finally found a good guy that I respected, and he was very 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 good about it with mom to the end, and uh, I don't you know. I just don't want to put anyone through. I know I was devastated when I lost my first wife, so yeah. I don't want to. And this stays on my days. Who knows, right? So. But that goes for any of us. Yeah, but you guys are still young. Um, I mean, yeah, you never know when your numbers up. But I, I've, I've been married. I got my children. I'm 63 years old. I should, I shouldn't even be here. Officially, I should have been dead a long time ago, but I'm still here for some reason. So I live day by day. I don't. I would like to find someone that I could 
share some time with you. Yeah, for you know, sure. uh, you know, go dance and see a movie, sit down and what, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, but if that happens, cool. If it doesn't happen, so be. I haven't been in a relationship now since 2009. So I, I did that lesbian for a while. That was. Uh, <laughs> okay, I, I want, that's good that you. <laughs> yeah, I, was de- I did the lesbian for a while. Tell us about that. <laughs> from the beginning, she was a lesbian. Like you knew from the get-go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I met, when I met her, yeah, she was. You're like she yeah. was that fabulous. You're like I don't care. Well. He, he turned. Like <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Did you guys have a connection? Like you had, obviously had a connection. Well, wow, yeah. And then yeah. she went and saw a um, um, Lang. Um, Katie Lang. She went to see Katie Lang. No, we went and saw Katie Lang. Uh-oh. Katie Lang was playing at Dundas Square. <laughs> and the, we, we, went, we went and saw Katie Lang. And <laughs> everything was good. Oh no! Good. And then, what, then her ex having to come by, oh, and they, the and they started they started talking. I mean, no big deal. They started talking, and then uh, a couple of days later, says, "Well, I'm going back to South oh, Park." It was fun while it lasted. It always starts with Katie. Yeah. it was fun while it lasted. She is. That's insane. Yeah. Constant cravings. Had three good three good months of fun. So, oh, that's, yeah. ama- that's amazing, though. Yeah. That's an amazing story. Oh, oh. oh well. Wow. Yeah, have you thought of any other songs that you really like? I wanted to do Detroit City. Detroit City. Yeah. And um, you want me to send you want me to send me the pillow. Yeah. Not the yeah. pillow case. No, not send me the pillow case, send me the pillow. <laughs> You're sending the whole pillow with a cushion inside? <coughs> in that song? That's a big package. Pillow. I don't know the size and of the And we're going to sing Islands in the Stream. Yeah. For yeah. Nostalgia. Yeah. yeah. Each night while I'm sleeping, oh, so lonely. I'll share your love and dreams that once were true. Send me the pillow. That you dream of So darling I can dream On it too Like I said the interview's not yeah, over yeah, It's yeah, gone I know, for a few I, I, I want to capture a full dimensional Like you know Sure who, who who is Trucker Dan the baby? How was <laughs> what was Trucker Dan like as a baby? Do you feel like you were a man at a young age? Well, I started earning my own money at six. What? Are you serious? Yes, yeah, so I started selling donuts door to door on a Saturday morning. And then <laughs> the okay, at six oh years old. God. It wasn't like you were working for a franchise. That was your own sort of... Well, no, no, no. We, there was a, a, a bakery that made donuts, and we had a whole bunch of us kids on the street, on the street selling it. A, a basket of donuts. Boy, children, they, would pay, they would pay six-year-olds? Yeah, they, yeah. That would have to be against the law. Yeah. <laughs> it was extra money. No, but still, what's the child labor? Do you remember the experience, or did you like Oh, yeah, I used to love it. Yeah, we, I think we got... Uh, Donuts are 25 cents a piece, or, uh, Did you eat a lot of or a dollar a dozen, or something, or something, or two dollars a dozen, or something, you know. But we, we got a percentage of that, and then, uh, after that, about eight, I love it because I don't remember anything yeah, before 12. About, <laughs> about age eight, I was reading the back of a comic book, and they had this wholesale place in Ajax. You buy quantities of stuff and sell them. And they had a catalog and everything, so I went around to catalog orders and then ordered, ordered stuff and had it drop shipped. You were eight years old? Yeah, when I had, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then at nine, I started... And you were spoiled? Well, no, not only after four or five. Okay. <laughs> only after four or five. Yeah. I started earning my own money. Because we never got allowance yeah. on the farm. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. so if you wanted money, yeah. so if you wanted money, you had to earn it. So, uh, picked tomatoes uh, when I was nine and ten, and then I got my paper boat at age ten. Paperboy age 10. Yeah, paper boat had, a, uh, had 125 customers just along our road, mm -hmm. which was about two and a half miles long. And my father made a deal with me if I saved half up for motorcycle when I was 11, we go by, we go half on a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to go back and forth to work, and we made my my bike, my bike, uh, my paper a lot quicker to do. <laughs> so I saved all my money, and when I just after, well, I turned 11 in January, uh, in December, and uh, that following May, Dad and I went and bought the motorcycle. I paid half, he paid half. And, wow. Yeah. That's good. I was yeah. hoping that it yeah. wasn't like, and then he no, made no, my dream no, come true. No. That's awesome. I paid half, he paid half, and uh, he went to work on it every day because my paper was after school. So you were, so. About, did you ride a motorcycle for a while? Oh, yeah. For how long? Well, oh, off and on most of my life. Really? Yeah. When was the last time you rode it? Last time I rode it. Last July. Nice. Last July. Last July. Yeah, my cousin and her and her, and both her boys uh -huh. all have motorcycles. So when I get down there, I get to ride. Uh, I don't. Know, let me take the bike out for a little, oh little boat boat once right. in a while. I was riding my father's Harley at nine. Harley. Oh my god. Yeah, Harley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with with, a, with a, the gear shifters on the gas tank. Yeah. Yeah, well, see, at those Harleys, the tires were almost like car tires, they were flat. So unless you really leaned hard, it stand up by itself without the kickstand. So what Dad would do, I couldn't reach the ground, but I could reach the clutch and the brake with my foot, with my feet. So Dad would get, get it started, get on the back, i get it rolling, he'd step off. I'd ride around the yard or wherever I wanted to. I got tired, I'd give me a yell. Slow down, he'd come down, step on the bike, and that was it. So, that sounds like he was an amazing Oh, uh, he was, yeah. He was a good guy. But we were too much alike when I got into my teens, so that's, I mean, I love my dad, and we got along famously as long as we went under the same roof. <laughs> my mom got pregnant for me. She was praying for a blonde haired. Uh, yeah, blonde haired, blue eyed little girl. She ended up with me. <laughs> Mind you, I was blonde. Yes, chef. <laughs> I was blonde. I had blue eyes. Um, all my sisters are dark hair and dark eyes. Who has blue eyes in the family? Just my uh, dad. Dad had. Yeah. My mom was brunette, dark eyes. Yeah. Uh, all three of my sisters are dark, dark eyes. Yeah. So, yeah. Your mom wanted a blue-eyed baby. Blue-eyed, blonde-haired little girl. <laughs> yeah. Just the point right off the hop, you know. Yeah, so, here comes and goes. Yeah. And I believe that I'm going to keep keep growing this mm -hmm. until I'm 65, if I live that long, uh -huh. and donate it again. So. That's awesome. awesome. It's, never, it's never been dyed. It's no well, it has been um, permed once, but that was when wow. I was 18. You got a perm when you were 18? Yeah. Well, what was that like? Did you have an afro? Yes, I did. Yes, actually, yeah. Afro? A friend of mine, what, a, a good friend of mine, friend of mine had, had, friend of mine had, had, had just opened up a unisex barber shop. Did you hear this? Yeah. You opened up a no, unisex barber No, no, a, a good friend of mine. Oh, so like no, 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 not me, no. That's a very, amazing. very good friend. No. A very good friend of mine opened up this barber shop called The Side Door. We, we were friends for a long time, and uh, every time, well, when we run to Tennessee, I bring back moonshine or uh, fireworks or something, right? And, yeah, and whenever he got a new product, I would be his guinea pig. When the big beer craze came out, it shoot. You know, they put beer in your hair, cha-cha, for, for texture or whatever. 
I was just, I was just getting picked for that. He got this new perm, and and. It didn't cost me a dime. Yeah. And I uh, looked at Blake, a white bozo little fucking clown. My hair is. I had to pick and everything. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I was. Uh, I was 18. I, no, no, I'll never got. No, I was, I was 18 at the time. Tonight I went to sleep in Detroit City. And I dreamed about those cotton fields at home. I dreamed about my mama, the old papa, sister, and brother. I dreamed about that girl who's been waiting for so long. I want to go home. I want to go home. Oh, how I want to go home. I've just been accepted as a contestant for the Cannabis Cup in the edible category. The, the uh, judges are in Kingston, Ontario, so I have to ship uh, a batch of my edibles to... As, uh, I'm, I'm stoned. I, well, I'm, he, not, I'm not... That, that's coming out like, oh, right. Well, you know, well your, your cherry brownies really gave me the best vacation of my life. I'm sending my, cher my cherry bombs. Cherry bombs. Those cherry bombs really rocked my world. <laughs> they changed my life. They were part of my rebirth. I talked about them extensively. I'm like, I gotta talk to the person that made these brownies. This is the person that made these brownies. He's legitimate. Delicious. Delicious edibles. He gave it to me as a gift. A gift. Yeah. How was your 420? Very high. Very high. I, how, how long I, did you last here at the Hotbox? Oh, I stayed to about six o'clock or so. Uh, that's a good time. Yeah. yeah. You were here like for the full day, right? Yeah, I, nice I, I got here shortly after eleven. Yes. You saw the band. Yeah, I saw uh, Kayla's band was excellent. Hers was the first band up. Uh, at 2 p.m. It really, really good. I was quite impressed with Kayla. Yeah. Where did she perform? Right here, they have the stage. Okay. I was kind of hoping she'd be on the roof. No, she's yeah. down here. What are you doing today? Relaxing, and now I have to go home and do some baking so I can have the brownies to be shipped. What kind of, what kind of brownies are I'm, you? I'm doing the cherry. The cherry brownie. Yeah. yeah. Can, can we vote for it? No, it's just <laughs> judges. 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 Uh, How does it work? Cup. Do they eat it and feel yeah, the yeah, effects of yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yes. So what are they judging on? They're ju uh, judging uh, on taste, I would imagine. I, I don't know. Just oh. that I would... <laughs> they, I don't know how they're going to judge it. They're going to eat it and judge it. <laughs> they're going to eat it. Yeah. Right yes. I hope so. If I win, I win. At least it's... Even if I don't win, it'll be, I'll be so I can say that I entered the candles, cup, and edibles, you know. Well, Trucker, no here at the Hotbox, you're a winner to all of us. I hate that there's drilling in the background, but whatever. It's a, the sounds of the city. Sounds of the city. And the, is that a summer sound? It kind of, I guess. Yes. Drilling the concrete. That kind of work is done in better weather. Yeah. yeah. Well, there are two seasons in Toronto. Construction and winter. Uh -huh. Whenever you do the stage work at um, on comedy night, do you, is it kind of like um, it's off the hip? Off of the hip. Uh -huh. Okay. Another world, and we rely on each other. Uh huh. From 
my love and you and Alice. That won't happen to us, and we've got no doubt. Too deep in love, and no way out. And the message is clear this could be the year for the real thing. That is what we are No one in between How can we be wrong? Say no way with me To another one And we rely on each other Uh-huh From one lover to another Uh-huh That is what we are. No one in between. How can we be wrong? Sail away with me to another world. And we rely on each other. Uh huh. From one lover to another. Uh huh. I am so far off here. <laughs> Thank you very much.